Hey everybody, welcome to our species spotlight on the snakeskin barb or Desmopuntus rhomboocelatus. Now this interesting little Southeast Asian barb is found in the, or is endemic to the Southern uh, Kalimantan, the, the Indonesian portion of Borneo in fact. And it's found in a couple of uh, river basin systems in that area being the Kapaus, Kapiang, Burrito and uh, Kahajan. Sorry, I had a little bit of a difficulty pronouncing some of those names. Uh, common habitats are typically kind of peat swamps with related black water type environments. Uh, calmer, uh, calmer water movement. They don't come from fast moving waters at all. Uh, they're often found in areas where there's submerged or emergent uh, vegetation along the riverbanks, usually grasses and related, as well as uh, areas where there's aquatic, den you know, dense aquatic vegetation, and in the areas like I just mentioned, marginal areas between land and water and the water, where it's kind of shallow but protected by a lot of emergent vegetation. Uh, the, wor the water itself obviously is typically stained in just about all the environments that they're found in, and that's due to the organics that are released by the plant matter in those types of environments, the decaying plant matter in, in the, surrounding, uh, the surrounding terrain and so forth. Uh, dissolved mineral content is typically very, very, very low, and the pH values in the wild can be as low as 3 to 4, which is really acidic. Substrates in these types of environments are typically uh, sandy with a lot of uh, tree roots, uh, branches, leaf litter. That's the type of environment that we're talking about. And, and when you can find uh, uh, aquatic plants, they're typically of the uh, genus Cryptocarine or Barclaya. So now we're going to cover a bit about the uh, behavior, size, color, uh, type of tank setup and so forth that you uh, you want to provide for snakeskin barbs. Uh, they're an excellent addition to a peaceful Southeast Asian theme type uh, biotope. Uh, you want to maintain at least a, a group of eight to ten of these fish. Uh, the best type of tank mates that you want to select uh, or the most suitable are uh, mid-sized anabantids. Some of the smaller anabantids would work well as well. They'd be fine with dwarf grammies and so forth as well. Uh, some of the mid to larger sized rasboras would be a good idea. And then some of the smaller to mid-sized peaceful type barbs like uh, gold barbs, cherry barbs, for example, they would work well as well as well with the snakeskin barb. Uh, the average length that they reach is about two to two and a half inches or five to five and a half centimeters. The females tend to be the bigger of the two and uh, they usually end up being bulkier and a little bit uh, plumper as they fill up with roe. Uh, the base coloration or the coloration on this fish really interesting. The base color is kind of a, a medium sandy kind of brown color. Uh, and then they have a, they have these interesting vertical irregularly shaped black with some emerald green kind of patches uh, uh, of kind of like vertical barring with this nice emerald green patching in it. it looks really, really, uh, really, really attractive in fact. Um, the best type of setup really, I mean, they do well in planted aquariums very well. Densely planted is really best. And then forest stream type setups where you'd have a lot of, uh, you could go with black water, a lot of branches, roots, fallen leaf litter and so forth. And pay attention to, uh, to making the water conditions right for them if you really want to see the maximum coloration that they offer. Uh, the types of plants that you'd select for a dimmer lit type of tank like that would be, of course, uh, species from the genus is Cryptocarine, Taxophyllum, and Microsorum. Those would be the groups of plants or the family of plants that you'd want to be looking at when stocking those tanks uh, with them. Water current, of course, as we mentioned before in the wild, they don't come from any fast moving water. So if you're selecting a canister filter, for example, you're more uh, more than safe by selecting a canister which would have your size of aquarium at the maximum end of its uh, of its capability. So you don't need a lot of water movement. And uh, bearing in mind that you know you should be keeping them in groups of eight to ten, and potentially in mix in some other Southeast Asian species would be a nice idea. Uh, the minimum tank size really should be about 36 inches in length or 90 centimeters. So now let's touch on uh, water conditions for the snakeskin barb. 
basically it boils down to uh, you know warmer, softer, acidic water. That's basically what they like. Temperature range in the wild can go from about 68 to 82 degrees uh, Fahrenheit or 20 to 28 degrees C. But in the aquarium, you want to really go for the middle of that range. So something about 20, something somewhere between 75 and 77 degrees or about 24 to 27 degrees Celsius would be fine. Uh, pH value should be kept between six and seven. Very doable in the aquarium, obviously, even though in the wild can be found it's substantially less. Keeping them between six and seven is, is, is adequate. And then a hardness level of about one to one to five dH. One, of course, is a little bit tougher to deal with or to maintain. So three to five is a good range and definitely very attainable if you're, if you're gonna be softening your aquarium water for them. When it comes to feeding the snakeskin barb, it's important to uh, realize that these fish are micro predators in nature. Uh, they feed on uh, open water column or mid water column zooplankton, insect larvae, small crustaceans. They also, uh, they also will eat small worms and so forth. Uh, so when feeding them in the aquarium, giving them a diet that has a good percentage of the protein uh, that is insect based like bug bites is, is always a good move. Um, as well, you want to maintain, uh, being a bard, they can be prone to, <clears throat> to bloating up a bit if they're only fed dried food. So, uh, you know, weekly feeding at least of some smaller frozen foods is definitely recommended for these fish. Uh, things like daphnia, brine, shrimp, chopped up blood worms, giving them to that, giving that to them a couple times a week really is best. And then of course, a little bit of vegetable matter in their diet once in a while is an important addition to being a barb as it would be for just about any barb. So in summary, the snakeskin barb ranks high on our list of desirable barb species uh, for any type of Southeast Asian community tank that features, you know, mid, uh, mid sized fish that are peaceful in nature. They do great in planted tanks. I uh, really feel that you can't go wrong if you're going to be setting up that type of community tank and want a nice, well-colored, interesting schooling barb to add to it that's going to get along with all the other fish. Uh, snakeskin barb is a great choice. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to comment and subscribe. Great to hear from you and look forward to the next one. Thanks for watching.